wires, cables, ropes. They can be static, dynamic, cinematic, realistic or even essential to gameplay. And since they're everywhere, how hard could it be to make them? I mean, it's just a bendy pipe with extra steps. So with this dumb mindset, I started to implement it into one of the puzzles in my VR game. The premise was simple. Plug the cable into a computer, open it and move this robot to solve a puzzle. Luckily, thanks to the last devlog, I already had a computer. Therefore, I could jump right into solving how on earth will I open it without the physics glitching it all over the place. I really wasn't sure where to start, but after an hour of pointless thinking, I remembered something. Wait a minute. I already solved it back in the devlog 6. You see, it's simple. Normally you would put a collider on the handle and say to Unity, I want my player to be able to pick this up. And Unity says, okay. And creates this glitchy mess every time your hand goes just a little too far from the handle. So instead, I did this. And I say, Unity, I want my player to be able to pick this collider and this original collider will follow it. Except this is no longer a collider, but just an empty object. You got it! And it works like a charm. No glitching at all. Now for the real challenge. And at first glance, my task is again very simple. I just have to make a long noodle that reacts to other objects and the player can move it by grabbing this part. But there's a catch. Cables are generally pretty bendy. And since our cable needs collision, we have a little conundrum ahead of us. You see, no matter how hard you try, you can't bend a collider. It's solid as a brick. So what do we do? A. We force Unity to bend it anyway. Or B. We faked bending. That's right. Since this is impossible, we do this. Instead of making a cable, we basically make a chain. With colliders placed on every link of this chain, the player will have no idea the physics on this cable are a bit funky, until he of course tries to stick something into this gap and breaks the whole thing. But let's worry about that later. At this point I had a working cable, but there was no skin on it, no mesh that player could see. And what is a cable good for if it's not visible? And that's the exact moment I saw this. Procedurally generated cable. It sounds like a good idea. So I naturally looked into it. I watched a couple of videos, I looked at documentation and I must say, I'm not doing any of that. Look, the mesh has to be generated and updated every frame. That sounds easy enough, but the implementation is a bit harder, which means no auto mesh generation unity stuff for me. No, thank you, sir. I'll do it like a professional in Blender. Thanks to Danny, the whole internet now knows about ragdolls, so I don't have to explain what they are. Now imagine a ragdoll setup, but for a cable. Genius, right? It's basically the same setup we already have, but instead of empty objects, we use bones. So I made my character, Mr. Long Noodleson, sliced him up and gave him bones. Then I imported Mr. Noodleson into Unity and applied the ragdoll magic. And voila! Just like that, we have absolutely flawless cable physics. Now that I've fully tested out the concept, I made the final Mr. Noodleson 2.0 with better resolution and tweaked physics. And it worked fine until I dared to implement the thing that cables are mostly famous for. Plugging and unplugging. Let's say the physics didn't really agree with me on how the plugging part should work. And that's why I decided to scrap the whole unplugging part for now. The crazy behavior you see here was caused by moving the cable too quickly to a socket position. And since the simplest solution is often the best one, I quickly turned off the physics for one frame and then after moving the cable into position, I turned it back on. As a final touch, I made a script that makes the end of the cable look at the place where it needs to be plugged in. The result isn't as obvious as I would like to, but it works. And I know what you're thinking. Will you patch this little gap? No, no, no. If it works, it works. The cosmetics aren't that important right now. The important thing to mention is that this whole cable thing took me days to figure out. So you can probably guess how the rest of the work on this magnificent robot went. And that's the reason why this video will be a two-parter. 
Don't worry though, part 2 is already in works so you probably won't have to wait months for it to come out. And while you wait for the next devlog, maybe check out the previous one, where I described how easy it is to make 3D models.